this is the Alina MA62 and uh, I will start by giving you an overview of the equipment. Back here we have the lamp house. This is where the exposure light is generated. And if we walk over here, in here is the mirror house with the front lens. This moves forward during exposure so that the light will hit the the wafer which is on the chuck. Back here I have the mask holder. Here is the stage with the chuck on top. Below the chuck you can see the stage with the backside alignment microscopes. Above is the top side microscope. On either side of the stage we have these knobs to control the uh, translation and rotation of the stage. The screen shows uh, the image from the microscope camera. The front panel here is mostly for setting up and controlling the machine and the keyboard also for control. And finally, below, we have the power supply for the lamp. If you are the first user of the day, you have to switch on the lamp. In order to be able to switch on the lamp, we have to switch off the electronics of the aligner, which is done up here, by simply switching this one to off. Then, on the power supply for the lamp, we press on. We veri verify that the um, lamp is correct, 500 watt xenon. When it says ready, we can press CP for constant power. And upon indicating start, we can ignite the lamp by pressing start. The lamp now is now ignited and has a, a, a warm-up sequence uh, ramping up the power and during this the, the power supply will indicate lamp cold. Once the lamp is, uh, is ramped up, it uh, should be allowed to uh, warm up completely and stabilize for about 15 minutes. Once the lamp is ignited, we can switch on the uh, electronics. So you just tilt this one towards on. And wait for the boot. And when the screen says press load button, we press the load button on the keyboard and the machine will initialize. The initialization and uh, switch on is, is finished when it says ready for load. Before we start our exposure process, we need to make sure that the lamp is set up correctly. We uh, want to ch check the set point for the constant intensity mode. We do that by switching to constant power mode by pressing the CP. Then we use the change display button to make sure that we have selected here channel 2. So if I press change display we can cycle through to channel 2 because channel 2 is the one we want to use that is the intensity measured at 365 nanometers as indicated here so once we have channel 2 selected we can press set CH1, CH2 press and hold until you did the display changes this now shows the set point for the constant intensity mode and if we want to change it we simply use the plus and minus buttons here to change it once the correct intensity has been set, press and hold again. And now the value is stored. So before uh, testing it, we can switch back to channel 2 for constant intensity. Now we would like to check that the intensity is correct. We can do that by using the lamp test uh, on the aligner. 
So on the keyboard here, we need to press lamp test. And then we need to select the option here which says lamp test. So we need to press the enter key. And now the uh, front lens and mirror comes forward and the uh, shutter is opened. Now you can see a quite bright light here. Uh, in terms of safety, the intensity of the light that's scattered here at the front of the lens is about a factor of 50 lower than the intensity we see down here on the, uh, on the power supply. And once we move away from this, it drops rapidly. And when we come out here, where the operator's face normally would be, it's at least 1,000 times lower, which is perfectly safe. So once we are satisfied that the intensity is correct, we press lamp test again to stop it. Now I would like to show you the procedure for loading the mask and, uh, and making a first print. We start by pressing change mask on the keyboard. You can see here that the display here indicates that it is in change mask mode and you can use the enter bottle button the enter button to change the uh, vacuum mask vacuum on and off over here by the mask holder I take my mask place it on the holder and push it toward the towards the top left corner. Now in order to secure the mask to the holder I want to switch on the mask vacuum by pressing the enter button here on the keyboard. You can also see that the display indicates that the vacuum is on and when we return here the mask is now fixed to the holder. As an extra precaution there is a clamp here which can be released so that if the vacuum fails, this will hold the mask. Now in order to load the mask holder into the machine, I pick it up. Now I have to flip it over in order to insert it into the machine. You can also see here that I have mounted the mask with the chrome side up, so that when I flip it over, it will have the chrome side down towards my substrate. When I flip it over, I usually hold a hand underneath so that in case the mask would drop, it would drop into my hand, hand rather than onto the floor. The mask holder now slides in here, it has to go all the way in so that the front side is flush with the uh, rest of the machine. And then I press change mask in order to lock it in place. For first print exposure, I want to make sure that the um, stage will be uh, centered so that when I return for my next print and, has and have to do alignment, everything is, is almost in the correct position. So I make sure that the, the uh, Y stage knob here is at 10 and the same with the X and I make sure that the rotation flag here is in the center as indicated by the white line here. Another thing that is important is that the chuck which goes here on the uh, loading slide like this is also centered so that the center line here on the chuck matches up with the center line on the slide. For the first print, I'm actually using the machine in alignment mode. But in order to avoid the top side microscope moving up and down every time I do an exposure, I have selected BSA microscope here so that the aligner is set up for backside alignment. This can be toggled by pressing this one, so now it would be topside alignment. 
and when the LED is on, it's for backside alignment. To set up the parameters of the exposure, I use select program to select the contact mode. So the exposure type now is soft contact, there is hard contact, low vacuum, vacuum, proximity printing, flood exposure, and back to soft again. I would like to use hard contact for my first print. So once I have selected using the arrow keys, I press select program again. And now I can use the edit parameter button to set the rest of the parameters. I would like an exposure time of 13 seconds. So I am using the Y button to set the parameters. Fast can be used to, to go in uh, units of 10 seconds at a time. And I use the X button to progress to the next parameter. This is the alignment gap. I move on. Exposure type has already been set to hard. There is the hard contact wait time, which means that after the contact has been established, it will wait for 10 seconds for everything to settle down before the exposure starts. The wedge error compensation type is contact, and I'm not using any offset. Those were the parameters for hard contact. Now, in order to load a wafer, I pretty much do as the machine indicates. It says ready for load, and on the keyboard, the load button is uh, load button LED is is blinking. So I press load and follow the instructions. It says to me, pull slide and load sub substrate onto chuck. So I pull the loading slide all the way out and take my wafer. with resist. I place it on the chuck and align the flat and the side to the pins. There are two pins here at the bottom for the major flat and then one pin here for the edge. So I push my wafer towards it, like so. Once the position is correct, I use the flashing enter button to turn on the chuck vacuum, like so. So that now when I move the slide in, nothing will move on the chuck. So again, I do uh, as the machine is telling me, move slide into machine and confirm with enter. So I move the slide all the way in and press enter. Now the sequences immediately to do the wedge error compensation. So this is carried out now. And is followed by a pause which is intended for the alignment of the substrate. This also means that at this point, if flat alignment is necessary on the first print, it can be carried out now. But since we are doing a very simple first print, I simply press exposure. Now creates the contact between, has the step to wait for the hard contact to settle. And once that is done, front lens mirror will come forward and the shutter will open. Now the exposure is done, so the mask and substrate separate, mirror moves back, chuck comes down and should be ready for unload in a second. Again, machine is indicating to me, pull slide and unload exposed substrate. I pull it out, once it's all the way out, 
it resets and is ready for the next. When the last wafer has been exposed and unloaded, we can unload the mask. Same procedure as before, start by pressing change mask on the keyboard. I slide the mask holder out of the machine, holding my hand underneath the mask. Flip it over, place it on the table here. I release the clamp and release the vacuum by pressing enter. I can now unload my mask. Like so. And that's that done. When we leave the machine, we can press, even though the, the mask holder is not in the machine, we can press ch change mask again. And it will the machine will ask us to confirm that the mask holder is not in the correct place by pressing enter. When our last wafer has been exposed, we uh, prepare the machine to leave it by um, switching the uh, illumination here to top side alignment if we've been using back side alignment also reduce the intensity of the topside light to half in order to, to uh, get a little more life out of the bulb. If a chuck, a chuck or mask holder different than 4 inch has been used, return the 4 inch to the machine. And also if an objective other than the 5 time microscope has, be, has been used for alignment, turn the uh, microscope objective back to the 5 times objective. We will not uh, switch off the lamp, that will be done automatically, so we just leave it as it is. And the last thing we do before we leave is to log out of the equipment use in Lab Manager and fill in the logbook.